For many creators and entrepreneurs today, virtual meetings, it's so essential in terms of getting our messages, products, and services out there, as well as closing leads during and after our meetings. One powerful approach is to include call to actions or CTAs and sales messages as part of your virtual meetings. In this video, I want to talk to you about the do's and don'ts when it comes to incorporating uh, call to actions or customizing your meetings or including sales messages during your virtual meetings, as well as this tool that I'm going to share with you called Be Virtual that enables you to build in call to actions in various ways. You don't have to be a programmer or a designer and it's super easy to pick up and it's very affordable as well. Let's get started with do's and don'ts. The first one is be clear and be relevant. If the call to action isn't clear and it's not directly related to the content you're speaking to, people are gonna be lost and even frustrated. Next is about providing value first, always. You want to always establish trust and credibility by addressing your attendees' needs and concerns first before you throw them any sort of call to actions and sales messages. Timing is really crucial. You don't want the call to actions and sales messages just to be bombarding your audience at the beginning. Instead, it should be relevant to what you're talking about and there should be a flow to this as well. Otherwise, your attendees will be distracted and even lose interest with the main message. Next is about using visuals. I know that it's not always easy with things such as sharing a Google slide and making it look pretty or within Zoom, you know, all you can do is share an emoji and maybe with a hyperlink, hey, it's in the chat window, click on that. Instead, with Be Virtual, for example, you can actually customize and personalize your meeting. I'm gonna show you one quick example on the screen right now, one of many. You can use your own brand color, um, graphics or fonts and really make your meeting come alive. You can also build in permanent button and call to actions within your meeting, as well as additional ones revealed as needed throughout the meeting. Next is about making it actionable. Now, the language for these call to actions will require probably several copywriting lessons, which I have taken several when it comes to advertising and writing, creating ads for Facebook or social media. So let me just share my two cents. Consider exploring call to actions such as learn more or explore our services and offerings. These are helpful yet not very intrusive. However, towards the end of your meetings or webinars, maybe you want something a little bit more direct. And that's when you can use things like join now or get started. You see the difference of urgency here? So you really wanna provide a variety of different call to actions. That leads to our next do, which is measure the performance of your call to actions and sales messages and see how people are reacting and responding. You know how these buttons are working, so you can also track them accordingly to see the landing pages that are really resonating to see when people are actually taking actions. And that means that the content of your meetings and webinars are resonating with them and they're very clear on taking action. So everything is connected and they come together. Speaking of offer options and call to actions, you want to have a variety in terms of buttons, links, QR code, and maybe do a test run by recording the session or invite uh, a few people working internally to make sure that one, there's enough time for people to click on the call to action, that it's prominent and clear enough uh, on the screen, making sure it's as accessible as possible. As I was talking about the do's, I was also bringing up the don'ts, but let's summarize the don'ts of what not to do when it comes to virtual meetings and webinars. Don't overwhelm. So don't over plan and share your call to actions and sales messages. People will get turned off by them. So use them sparingly and strategically. Avoid hard selling. Resist the urge to be overly pushy and direct. Make sure you provide value first. Don't interrupt constantly. Frequent interruptions and call to actions on screen can disrupt the flow of your meetings. Avoid clustered screens. So you can have these buttons on and off every once in a while. You can even have these pop-up buttons designed and created using Be Virtual, but make sure that is not constantly coming in and out throughout your meeting. As much as you can, try to create a seamless virtual experience. Don't hide the important message. When you're providing key value to your audience, make sure there isn't a button or a call to action or screen that's blocking that message. You wanna make sure that your key message stands out from the rest. 
avoid generic messages and call to actions. Make sure that if you're going to present with a call to action, it should be tailored and personalized to your audience. Last but not least, don't forget to follow up. So you're going to start getting interest. Maybe people are booking these 30 minute sessions to learn more about you. Maybe they're reaching to you through your contact us page on your website. Please do follow up. Sometimes nurturing leads might mean that you have to follow up three, four, even five times. But by providing additional information, AKA value, you have a much better chance for closing your leads. If you want to experiment with personalizing, customizing your virtual meetings, as well as, you know, designing these call to actions as buttons, as part of your meetings and webinars, I highly recommend that you check out Be Virtual. I've listed a link right here on the screen. Also in the description below, check it out. Let me know if you have any questions. If you do decide to sign up, you can try Be Virtual completely free. The free version comes with a 90 minute meeting duration. So unlike Zoom that only is 45 minutes, you don't have to wrap up your sales calls or meetings much earlier. I hope you enjoy this. And if you have any questions, please let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, I highly recommend you check out the first video related to Be Virtual in which I'm going to walk you through some of the key functionalities and features and examples from the community. Love you so much. And I'm going to see you next time. Bye.